So today, we are going to be talking about how universities across the United States closing has affected international students. Coming up right after this. As we are all aware, this whole virus pandemic has created all sorts of social issues across the globe. And it is an undisputed fact that a lot of people, media houses, health experts have all spoken about the various impacts of this pandemic. But one of the important things that nobody seems to be talking about is how is this affecting international students? I mean, there's been general communications about universities shutting down and moving from face-to-face interactions to online. But those are general communications targeted towards students across the length and breadth of the United States. What about the international students? Has anybody actually sat down to think about how this might have affected them that they may not be speaking about? Well, I decided to have a conversation with a friend and I'm going to bring that conversation to you guys so you know to an extent how this is affecting international students in the US. If you are a student and you school in a different country or you are in a different continent, please share with us in the comments below how this situation is affecting students in the country where you live. This is the conversation I had with one of my friends. Tell us your name and what you do. My name is Dennis Mood and I am an international student at Ohio University. In my final year PhD doctoral program, I'm studying traditionary art. My field of research is in the area of African literature, film studies, women and gender and sexuality studies. Yeah, so those, those are the things that I focus on. Who is an international student or who can be classified as an international student? In my opinion and per my situation, an international student is uh, a foreign student in the United States who is admitted based on the F1 visa or a J1 visa and then M1. So you are admitted purposely for your activities in, in the school. So you are studying or in an exchange program. And one of the primary rules that you as a student or a person admitted to the United States on F1 or J1 or M1, you are not required to work outside campus. What it means is that you can only work on campus, institutions that are established by your respective university. So one, you are admitted on a specific visa, and then two, your visa does not require you to do certain things that a domestic student will be able to do. Sometimes people have this wrong perception that if you are schooling in the United States, you have the same benefits as, for instance, a domestic student will have. Mm -hmm. So it's better we put that in perspective. What jobs do international students typically do in the United States? Working on campus is, is, is not... There are some that you can get, you know, maybe an office job. Um, you can get maybe a research assistant job where you assist the professor, you know, you know, in terms of doing research, in terms of putting together curriculum and in sometimes help in the classroom. But most of the time, I know that international students do or the work that they engage in to be able to make some money for themselves is working in the cafeteria, for instance, working in the dish room, working in facilities that are meant to prepare food for students and for faculty. Sometimes you work at event services. And so these jobs are the the majority of international students work in these jobs. What are the types of funding an international student can come to school in the United States on? Or what are the types of funding that an international student school in the United States can have access to? Most international students rely on funding or scholarships. And so there are some instances where students will you know, would be awarded maybe a GA, which is a graduate assistant scholarship or funding, or you will be awarded a graduate research assistant award. And in some cases where the department of your studies do have some kind of money, they sometimes award fellowship. So these three categories are the sources of income that students use to make some money or to be able to get some money to fund for their education, be able to pay for their books, pay for their rent, and also be able to buy food. So 
in the US, I don't know, I, I mean, in Ohio University, I don't know about other schools. Most of the funding that international students get is from either being a GA or being a GRS. I guess I should ask you this. If I'm on scholarship, why should I be working? I'm thinking being on a scholarship means that the school pays me or the school gives me money and I get to work for a department on campus. So if I'm on scholarship, why should I be finding extra jobs on campus as well? When you are admitted, the first promise that you have before getting a visa to the US and to be able to study is that you should be able to financially provide for yourself. That is mm -hmm. able to pay for your fees, your rent, your education, books, and then sometimes food. So tell me this. How has the closure of the universities affected international students in the United States specifically? Before I go to the problem, let me let me state this. Let me give this background. So if you are on a GA, your funding that you get from the school is quite okay, which means that you will be able to pay your rent, all right? You'll be able to pay your fees, all right? You'll be able to buy food and be okay. But for students on GRS, it is quite difficult because they are paid about $100 every two weeks. So they end up getting about $85 or $90. And you have to rely on working on campus. Now, these works are jobs that you cannot work remotely. The school has closed. They will not be able to work in the cafeteria. They will not be able to work in the dish room. No matter how the university wants to do it, they cannot work remotely on these kinds of jobs, unless there are some interventions that, okay, we're going to increase the kind of money that GRS students get so that they'll be able to live afloat during this time. So I remember you were telling me that you had started an initiative. What is it about? What motivated you to start this GoFundMe project? So one of the things that motivated me to start the fundraising, um, if you're a GA, the university says that you are still going to pay students who work. Um, but the caveat is that you must be, you must continue to work remotely. So you must liaise with your supervisor to be able to provide you some kind of remote work schedule that you can maintain and still be paid by the university. What motivated me to go beyond my comfort zone, raise money or raise support for students on GRS is based on this fact that the school has closed. They will not be able to work in the cafeteria. They will not be able to work in the dish room. No matter how the university wants to do it, they cannot work remotely on these kinds of jobs. Unless there are some interventions that, okay, we're going to increase the, um, the kind of money that GRS students get so that they'll be able to live afloat during this time. But since that is not in at the moment, what it means is that these students would have to rely on only $95 every two weeks. Averagely, we do pay a rent of about $350 to about $600. You pay fees $450 every month. Uh, insurance is high that's another topic that we can talk about and then you would have to think about buying food so since all of this situation started and universities shutting down and some international students losing their jobs as a result what is the general feeling amongst international students as a whole so um talking to a few students the general impression i get and the feel i get you know is most of them are at a place of obliviousness not knowing what will come up next. It is not a good thing, I should say. I can only imagine psychologically how some people will be feeling and what they will be going through. You know, and when we talk about psychological issues, there are a lot of things that are not taken into consideration. And so we tend to neglect that aspect of our well-being. And so that is the general feel I get from students on campus. And the question as to how are we going to survive? So is there something that is there to, you know, to help international students specifically. Now, and I say international students specifically because, you know, in all these difficult times, in several strategies and implementations that have been put in place, you will find out that general communication that goes out is mm -hmm. 
about students and you ask yourself if there's anything that is going to be given is going to be given to domestic students international students are lost in the whole equation and so i read emails that come out and it, it, they go like oh there are these a b c d assistance avenue for students but there are things that for instance a graduate international student cannot have access to it and so pertinent question as to how do we pay our fees? Are we still going to pay that $450 every month? How are we going to get money to be able to survive and all that? These are very important questions that could, aside putting stress on us, can also affect our psychological state. So as you heard from this interview that I had with my friend, there are so many challenges in so many different layers that international students have to deal with. Unfortunately, most people don't hear about it because not all international students are comfortable sharing some of these things and so i'm urging you all to please visit the gofundme link in the description below and give no matter how small or how little it is please give to help support international students so i'm sure you are wondering how the monies from this gofundme project will be distributed or dispersed to international students well the organizers have told me that they are already in talks with two international student-centered offices at Ohio University. And so they are going to hand over the proceeds of this project once it comes to a close to the international student offices to find the best possible ways to disperse money to international students who need it the most. So rest assured, the money is going to be in safe hands as talks are already ongoing. Let me quickly clarify this. So when we say international students, we don't mean African students. We mean international students within the international students community at Ohio University. I'm sure you may be wondering how two African men are having a conversation about raising funds for international students. Well, like I said, it's not for African students, but international students, irrespective of whichever country you come from. Once you are in the school and you hold an F1 visa, you are qualified to receive monies that will be generated from these proceeds. So far as you've lost your job due to universities closing across the United States. Yes, you might think that you don't care because, hey, you know, you live in your own country or you don't have any siblings out there. But imagine if your son or your daughter or your nephew or niece went on a study abroad program and this happened to them. No amount is too small. Kindly visit the link and donate to a worthy cause. Also, share this video, drop a like on this video, and share with us in the comment section below what you think about this whole conversation that we had. Were there any things that you found out that you didn't even know about? And share your experience if you are a student studying in Britain or studying in Europe or Canada or wherever, so that again, we cannot learn from the experience. A big thank you to my friend Dennis Mood for taking time off his busy schedule and coming to have a chat with us and also shedding light on what is actually going on amongst the international student community at Ohio University. Thank you, Dennis, and we hope to have you here back on the channel soon. So until I see you on the next one, stay safe out there, keep being each other's keeper, wash your hands regularly, make sure you are using your sanitizer, stay home if it is not really necessary for you to leave home and like i always say don't be the one infecting your friends and families with covid19 until i see you on the next one peace